All right. I hear the clock. It's 6 a.m. It feels so far from where I've been. I got my inks, got my pancakes too. I got my maple syrup, everything but you. I break the yolks, make a smiley face. And I kinda like it in my brand new place. I wipe the spots off of the mirror, don't leave the keys in the door. I never put wet towels on the floor anymore. Cause dreams last for so long. But even after you're gone. And I know that you love me and soon I know you will see that you were meant for me And I was meant for you Play the harmonic, Steve <laughs> Called my mom, but she was out for a walk Consoled a cup of coffee, but it didn't want to talk Picked up the paper, it was more bad news More hearts being broken, more people being used Put on my coat in the pouring rain I saw a movie, but it wasn't the same It was happy, I was sad It made me miss you, oh so bad Cause dreams last for so long even after you're gone And I know That you love me And soon I know you will see That you were meant for me And I was meant for you I go about my business And I'm doing fine Besides what would you say If I had you on the line same old story, not much to say Hearts are broken every day Hearts are broken every day Hearts are broken every day So anyways, long before these electronics existed There was a man And his name was Joe Poltz his middle name was Peter, Joseph Peter Poltz. And his parents came from Hungary, near Budapest. Joseph Peter Poltz was born and his last name was spelled P-O-L-C-Z. -Z. He immigrated to Canada and his parents were lettuce pickers near Windsor, Ontario and Kingsville. And they picked lettuce for a living and followed the crops in the summertime. And my dad, Joseph Peter Poltz, then met a woman named Winifred Catherine McMullen. Her dad, Joseph McMullen, was the seventh son of a seventh son and was in and out of prison, was a mad alcoholic who played the fiddle and was missing fingers. Her mom, Maria Bonini, came over from Italy. She slept with a lot of men in the town, so a lot of Winifred McMullen's sisters and brothers are half-sisters and brothers. Some of them were in and out of jail. Anyways, Joseph Poltz met Winifred McMullen and he got married to her and then he had sex with her in the back seat of a car. And out of his loins sprang Steve Poltz. in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Now this song, You Are a Mem For Me, did not exist yet. Steve Poltz studied classical guitar. And then, as the years went by, he played gigs in between doing his paper route and getting mostly A's. He was a precocious kid who got good grades but had bad citizenship. Then, he met a girl from Alaska, from Homer, Alaska, named Jewel Kilcher. 
because he was in a band called the Rugburns. He staggered into a coffee shop one night in Poway, California, where Jewel was working, and she said to him, I write songs too. And he said, let's go back to my house and write some songs. <laughs> so she said, let me show you pictures of my stained glass art. And I said, okay, come on into my bedroom. <laughs> So then he and she started writing lots of songs together and going camping. He was high on drugs a lot, but she wasn't. They wrote some songs, and if he was able to get tonight, figure out the Higgs boson particle from the Large Hadron Collider, he could go back in time and relive some of these special moments. And then he could come back to the stage at Locals Only because he Stephen Pulse, if I shouldn't speak of myself in the third person, now I can make the switch. I am feeling sad because there will be times in the future when I will miss this stage. And I'll think, well, how did I get here? I remember I played the Bob and Tom show once with the rug burns and painted Todd Snyder's toenails. And I remember playing softball with Todd Snyder, and then Dean was in a band where they all dressed Amish. I remember Christy Lee, I remember Bob, I remember Tom, I remember them all. And we played some festivals, we played a place called The Patio, and it was at The Patio. I've had a long love affair with Indianapolis, man. It was at the patio where I came up with the idea for the Rugburns Rock t-shirts. I was sitting backstage at the patio and I was drinking a rolling rock and I looked at the case and I said, holy fuck, stinky, Rugburns Rock. And he goes, what? And I go, Rugburns Rock, write this down right now. The shirt is gonna say Rugburns Rock. Holy crap, that shirt made me tens of dollars. <laughs> so I kept, he kept, Steve Pultz kept touring and then the song, this song was born. And then this song made me a little bit of money, which I spent most of it, but that's cool. I didn't pay my taxes. I was like Wesley Snipes. And then I came home a couple years ago, probably after playing Locals Only, and there were IRS agents outside my apartment. And they said, you're never fucking home, but we followed your website. They didn't say fuck. They said, you're never home, but we noticed on your website you just ended a tour. And we knew you'd show up. Because you say everything on your blog. To the extent of, I'm on an American Airlines flight, so excited to come home tomorrow. I'm gonna walk in my apartment at 10 a.m. and go through my mail. They look like men in black outside my door in suits. So I paid my tax bill. Got it all taken care of finally, I got a good accountant. As I stand here on this stage, I'm all in, I'm flush. Where I stand is who I am. I even paid off my student loans. I don't owe anybody money except maybe Dave who owns this bar. I probably owe him money for all the fun he's given me through the years. But right now I would like to wait till the song swings around again so I can get back to singing the third verse which I wrote with Jewel on a drug bust in Mexico. It involved 56 tons of marijuana and Mexican policemen and automatic weapons and drug smugglers, slow ones who got caught and told where all the weed was buried. It involved Mormon youth group kids coming down for spaghetti feeds, eating spaghetti laced with cannabis sativa cooked into the spaghetti sauce. It involved naked people playing frisbee. It involved making love on the sand. It involved picking up a guitar and this little lick coming to me right here. It involved Steve Carell from The Office and the 40-year-old virgin getting kicked out of a wedding on The Office. And when they did this, the wedding band doing that part, and Steve Carell going boo 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 boo, and me knowing that I just influenced television. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long, strange trip, but we are all still alive tonight. And just think, somebody who's in this room probably won't be here next year when I'm back. 
who knows who it'll be? Well, if I'm not back, it'll be me. <laughs> because we all have numbers on our head and we don't know what those numbers are, but we all will expire. In the words of Jim Morrison, no one here gets out alive. So my advice to you people tonight is eat, drink, and be merry, and tell the people you love, you love them, because you never know when they're gonna be gone. And I would just like to say, I love you all. And I mean it, man. I brush my teeth, I put the cap back on. I know you hate it when I leave the light on. I pick a book up, I turn the sheets down. I take a drink and a good look around. Put on my PJs and I hop into bed I'm half alive but I feel mostly dead I tell myself it'll I be alright I shouldn't think any more tonight Cause dreams last for so long Even after you're gone And I know that you love me and soon I know you will see that you were meant for me and I was meant for you you were meant for me and I was meant for you